we as Christians love people and we are concerned about the issues that face them, specifically because we are all image bearers of the great God. We all have this inherent value because God imbued us with this value and we are all equal and therefore Christians love people. So that's the starting point. Right. So we look around, we say we do care about these issues and we do need to be talking about them. But we have to be careful to distinguish a concern and a love from agreeing with the world on how to approach these questions. No doubt you've heard the statistics that there are kids uh, that are increasingly not only just doubting their faith and having questions, but walking away from the faith that their parents taught them. Why do you think this is happening? Yeah, so research shows that somewhere between 60 and 90% of kids who grew up in Christian homes are walking away from their faith by their early 20s. Mm. So researchers who study this, it, there's no controversy of, you know, is this happening, is it not? It's just, to what degree? Is it more like 60% or is it more like 90%? And this has been confirmed by multiple studies over time. Sometimes parents just think, oh, that's just an alarmist statistic. But no, this has been really well documented. So of course the million dollar question is why does this happen? Because we want some answers so we can make right. it not happen. And many people have offered different explanations, but I would say in the very root of the problem is discipleship that we are not discipling our kids as Christian parents in the way that we are called to. Too many Christian parents think, well, if I just take my kids to church each week and if I take them to some youth groups and we do some devotionals at home, we kind of check these boxes off that my kids are gonna grow up and they're gonna be a Christian and they're gonna love the Lord. But that's not enough today. It, it's not supposed to be enough. We're supposed to be giving our kids a much deeper understanding of their faith. And when kids are growing up in a culture like this, that's increasingly hostile to Christians and Christianity, they're gonna need some really deep roots if they're going to stand firm. People today aren't just saying, oh, Christianity, that's just false, that's a bunch of myths. They say that, but they also say Christianity is bad. It's harmful. We have harmful beliefs that hurt other people. So we have a lot that we have to be able to stand up to today, both emotionally, both intellectually. And this is something that parents overwhelmingly, in my experience, are not preparing their kids for. I think you're exactly right. And, and it's hard because many parents uh, say things like, well, um, I'm hanging on to my faith and my kids are gonna have to work that out uh, for their faith. But our kids are looking for people to give them answers. And if we don't give them answers, they're gonna look somewhere else. They're gonna say, hey Siri, is there a God? Uh, hey Alexa, um, um, is Christianity good or bad for the world? But God's given our kids to us. And so we need to be educated on these things and then teach them to our children. So here's some, here's some questions that I have for, for you with regard to our kids walking away from church. Some kids walk away from the faith because they feel that the church is not concerned about the things that they're concerned about. They wanna know, well, what about racial justice? Why doesn't the church talk about that? What about gender identity? Uh, what about the immigration problem? Why, why aren't we uh, dealing with the climate issues? Um, how do we talk to our kids about these things when our church doesn't talk about it and we don't know a particular Bible verse that uses those terms? Yeah, that's a great question. It's a really important question today. And I think it starts with just affirming that it is something that we should be concerned about. We as Christians love people and we are concerned about the issues that face them, specifically because we are all image bearers of the great God. We all have this inherent value because God imbued us with this value and we are all equal and therefore Christians love people people. So that's the starting point. Right. So we look around, we say we do care about these issues and we do need to be talking about them. But we have to be careful to distinguish a concern and a love from agreeing with the world on how to approach these questions. Mm. The secular culture will tell you if you love someone, you will love them in this particular way. Mm. It's not just love them in some right. way. It's you must agree with what it means to love according to man's standards. So they will say something like, if you're really a Christian, Christian, then you will actually affirm that person's sin and celebrate it or defend their sin. 
That's right. That's the secular view of love. It is you are going to affirm whatever a person wants for themselves. You're going to come along with them on their journey. You're going to give them the high five. You're going to say, yes, everything that's right for you is right for you. But a Christian view of love is not that. We want for others what God wants for them whether or not they want that for themselves. Right. That's a huge distinction that kids need to understand when addressing all of these hot button kinds of issues. And do you think the Bible addresses these hot button issues? Yes, absolutely. The Bible might not come right out and say, okay, here's how you're going to handle immigration issues in 2022. No, but when we understand the Bible first and we have that biblical worldview, we need to learn how to think from a biblical perspective. And that's something that doesn't just happen by memorizing the Bible verses on Sunday. Mm -hmm. At Sunday school, kids have to be trained to think in these ways. They have to be trained how to take what they understand from the Bible, from God's eternal truths, and to think in light of that. So these are things we have have to help them with because if we don't, the world will train them on how to think about them. And that's not going to be from a godly perspective. Oh, this is so great. Um, Natasha, what about uh, our kids saying things like, well, you know, what's true for you is not necessarily true for me. And it's definitely not true for my friend who just had this conversation with me and they told me what their truth is. Um, how do we raise our kids to hold on to a faith that says, no, there is the truth, and that's what God says the truth is. Well, I think that's why apologetics is so important. And of course, I'm biased. I'm an apologist, and I love apologetics, but I love it because it's so important. We have to have a good understanding of why there's good reason to believe that Christianity is true. So these big worldview questions that all of us, every single human has to answer in terms of, does God exist? And if he exists, has he revealed himself? Is the Bible God's word? Well, who are we as humans? All of these questions have true or false kinds of answers. God either exists or he doesn't exist. It doesn't make sense when you put it into these specific terms to say, well, it's my truth that he exists, and if it's your truth that he doesn't exist, well, that's okay. We wouldn't talk about it in that way. So giving kids a concrete example with a question like that so they can see, this is a true or false kind of thing. It's a category error to say, oh, well, that can be true for me and not for you. When we're talking about worldview questions in particular, we're not talking about something that can be true for one person and not for the other. Right, like, we're talking like about is, true uh, or does false. chocolate taste good? Right. You might say no, I might say yes, but when we're talking about does God exist and is the Bible his word, that's either true or it's not. That's right, and I think giving kids those kinds of questions helps them to see, okay, oh. that, that makes more sense. Because sometimes these quotes that go out there in culture that plot, they're so popular and float around about, oh, it's my truth, we don't stop to talk about, well, what do you mean by my truth? What questions are you talking about? So we can make it much more tangible for our kids. We hear this term called deconstruction. Um, I'm hearing it more and more. Uh, what is that all about? And is it dangerous? So this is one of those words that if you asked 100 people what they mean, you're going to get 100 different kinds of answers. So I will say that as a caveat here. Sometimes a person simply means that they're taking apart the faith that they have right now so that they can make sure that their beliefs actually line up with the Bible. They wanna strip away any assumptions or anything else that they might have learned over time and just make sure that what they believe lines up with reality. Okay, that's a good kind of deconstruction if that's all that someone means. And I've seen that used in some ways. However, the more popular use of the term deconstruction today means that someone is walking away from the historic Christian faith and any kind of presupposition that the Bible is God's word, and they're saying, I'm going to deconstruct all of the beliefs that I've held, and I'm going to reconstruct based on what I find to be helpful for me. Mm. And what I think is going to be not harmful, but the most loving kinds of ideas to hold. So instead of looking at the Bible and saying, do my beliefs line up with the Bible, they're saying, I'm walking away from the Bible as any kind of sacred cow here, and I'm going to rebuild on the beliefs that mm. I find to be true. And just to be clear, I'm not saying that we should always just assume the Bible's true without looking for why there's good reason to believe it is. We absolutely should. But we also shouldn't start from the position of saying, well, I no longer feel the Bible is true. Therefore, I'm going to rebuild a faith of my own making and just come to these custom beliefs because I don't like what the Bible teaches. Those are very different things. 